and it helps people, you know, like follow the series. Now, that being said, where we're creating ultimate guides to check out the traffic source sources on your channel and see how much traffic you get from playlist views. And when you see that, you'll think, yeah, maybe I should probably spend more time focusing on the packaging, titles, and thumbnails of videos. Well, that's just my thoughts. Um, damn Sunday at best, playlists are broken. You can quote him uh, on Tube Filter or anywhere else. Uh, right. Uh, weirdly, Dan, we started off with 16 Super Chats. Now we've got 17 to get through. Uh, second <laughs> Chair Music. Hey, guys, I'm considering joining the coaching program. But I was wondering, would it be good for the video essay niche, particularly in history? And I would say absolutely yes. What Second Chair Music is referring to here is the one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, that is available through vidIQ and uh, what you get is a uh, a personal coach that you can video message uh, as free as often as you want and uh, receive video responses and these coaches what I will say is these coaches like you have to understand that there are a, a million and one different niches on YouTube so you know Subject matter experts are like a, a rare breed. And when you talk about the video essay history niche, I'm not going to say that we have a video history essay niche expert, but we have a YouTube growth expert coach who's yeah. going to get you thinking about the right questions to ask about that niche so that you almost answer them yourself through the help and guidance that you'll get from the YouTube coach. gaming channel has nine subscribers awesome you're nice. almost at 10 subscribers that is it that is you know trying to equate different subscriber sizes you know like 10,000 subscribers is a stadium full of people 10 subscribers which is going to be your first big milestone it's like uh, you go down to the bus stop and there's 10 people there on the bus, and you're talking to them about your you about your youtube content and they're passionately listening to you well, that's a well done for that uh, first milestone super mm. loop does AI art have a future on YouTube because I make AI art content and it feels like everybody hates AI art? Thoughts <laughs> on AI fashion design? So, I like one thing. One thing to understand is like there's going to be controversy, like regardless of uh, well, not regardless, but like, a lot of niches you'll, you're going to find some controversy. So, there's people who are passionate about like AI content. There's people who are definitely not. Mm -hmm. And you, as the creator, if you're going to go down this path understand that you're going to have a subset of people who don't want to watch your content and maybe they drop by to let you know they don't like it but you're not trying to make content for them anyway right if this is something that you're passionate about and you believe in then they they can be mad all they want you're still going to be also building an audience people are like oh cool this is the thing i like so it, it, i hope you're not coming at this from a point of like i'm trying to please everybody what do i do because you won't you just won't please everybody as for it having a future, YouTube is investing in AI tools, so yeah. I yeah, I would say that it does, but use responsibly. Like I, I don't think YouTube wants to see one hundred percent AI generated front to back content. I think they want AI used as a tool to help people make content. And the challenge is going to be that AI has reduced the barriers to entry for content like this. So there's going to be a probably ten thousand. AI art content channels this time next year. 
And so you have to establish yourself as one of the best or one of the most unique or one of the most like entertaining and informative on YouTube. And so there is a space and there will be leaders in that space. Do you have the creative um, now and determination to, to make sure that your channel is, is one of them? This will be the last super chat for now, I think, Dan. Uh, do you guys believe that timeless videos work the best? Where well, although the video may be a few years old, anyone from years to come would watch it. So, makes it sound like if I say absolutely <laughs> I, I don't want you to only try and make evergreen content for the rest of your life because it's hard it's like a difficult yeah. thing to do um, but if you can get some evergreen content it's like a consistent drip feed of new viewers to your channel and it, it could be great uh, but we certainly don't strive to make only evergreen content that's for sure yeah um, I describe this as a, like the resting heartbeat of a channel like when you haven't published a video for a couple of days <laughs> But as Dan says, if we were just making these videos all of the time, it would drive us insane because it's a, it's a certain format. Um, sometimes it can be quite dry, you know, it's very can be quite search based heavy or like just raw educational stuff and we don't want to do it all of the time but we know it has a, a place on the channel <laughs> right. new, new all, viewers a balance. Will, they, they discover your content through trends too if you stay up to date on things don't make evergreen content sometimes so yeah striking a balance depending on what the content would make we don't know they're they're Profile picture is just a black circle, so we have no idea what kind of content we're making. All right, then I'll bring super chats to a conclusion for now. We'll do some later. I'm gonna warn you, we've already got a lot of super chats. I'm gonna try and say just be maybe think about holding that super chat until next week. Because we don't want to do tons of super chats. The channel has questions for this one, which is Be Smart Outdoors. Uh, they have cracked 100 subscribers already. We have just 35 videos. It feels like they're almost ahead of schedule in that sense. And I think you had some intriguing thoughts about this one, where... Yeah, I, I saw this channel on the form, and I was really intrigued because they described themselves as an outdoor comedy channel. And I'm like, what does that mean? What do you mean outdoor comedy channel? And uh, yeah. it's... Yes, it's like safety videos that are made in jest. Like, you're outside, you're getting chased by a T-Rex, what do you do? And I think that's funny. Like, I do think there's, like, that, that funny sketch comedy kind of, like, element. That works well on YouTube, but it's difficult to break into, right? Like, how do you make a video and communicate a clear message when the message is that of a joke, right? So I've been thinking about this a little bit. I would say that... Uh, for the subscriber size and the amount of videos, having just a couple months ago a video with a thousand views, like they're already doing something right. Yeah, you know, they they are getting yeah. into this in a pretty big way. It reminds me of the channel a lot. It's pretty short. <laughs> Just as like an example of a channel that's doing it with six million subscribers, you know what I mean? Um, 
they do a lot of things that, it, you know, when it comes to titles and thumbnails, it's difficult for me to say exactly what's working and exactly what's not. But the one thing that's clear to me in, in looking at a lot of their videos is that they are doing comedy sketches. Like, if you look at Idiot Virus, what I like about that thumbnail, other than the words Idiot Virus, which is just funny, is the faces that the actors are making in the picture, right? Like, it makes it, it, it kind of starts to already get you in a mindset of, like, you know, how to fix an idiot's computer. And, and using the word idiot is, like, not something an actual tutorial would use, right? Like, if you're trying to fix a computer, you're not going to do that. So it's very One is Mysterious Shelter Found Hidden in the Woods. To me, that looks like a regular YouTube video in that it's not meant to be a comedy. It's like, oh, this person was in the woods and they found some shelter. That's kind of interesting. And so you might get confusion when people click on the video not realizing it's a comedy sketch. Whereas the T-Rex one is very obviously a yeah. comedy sketch because that yeah. just doesn't happen, right? So the nuance of the titles and the thumbnails in particular is well thought out. skills of this large channel but pay attention to the things that are almost like you, you get for free and you can skill up on which is packaging of content I would say and then probably the the comedy itself and so watching these videos and reviewing like the storytelling elements the, the, the beats and the pace and how that can be injected back into their content at, at the level they're currently at because we I can already see a development here of <laughs> But they're very simple, like there's no text on these and you, it's, it's always trying to convey a, an emotion of some kind very strongly and like so you, you get that instant, well I would say in some of these that instant curiosity gap. You sit down this one kind of difficult to mark this one through a couple of being honest with the audience and i'm not saying that you were intentionally being dishonest i just think someone who doesn't know any better clicks on the video and, and feels like it's not a vlog about you in the woods finding something cool it's a comedy video they are confused you know so if you're making comedy sketches just make sure that it's clear up front that's what this is and i'm not saying you have to do that by putting the word comedy in the title or something silly like that just going back to the other channel and i would say what makes it look like a comedy video versus a video uh, that is like based in reality you yeah. know and it, it helps to have a t-rex chase because there are no t-rexes walking around uh so people um, instantly know it's a comedy right it's almost like you need to tease a joke of some kind in a thumbnail and a title and the t-rex one does that in the easiest way I'm not. I'm. I'm not for fear today. I want. I want to be entertained and I want to laugh. And I'm not yeah. getting that from the thumbnail. Exploring dangerous snake territory looks like it could be. You know that you went somewhere and put yourself in a situation where you're messing with snakes, but unironically, right? You're not doing it as a joke. That's going to come off a certain way when people click on the video and realize very quickly that it's you doing a sketch. Alrighty, time for a little bit of this. So what we're going to do now, folks, is we're going to take this claw 
and pick out some random numbers from the form you have been filling out over the last couple of hours. Pick some of those channels and audit them on first impressions. We don't know what we're getting ourselves into, uh, but let me demonstrate how we're doing it. And the videos themselves. Okay. Just play one for a second. Right, so riddles and stuff. This is a format that is not new to YouTube, I yeah. would I would suspect. And now, thanks to AI. I think there's going to be more channels like this. Yeah. Mostly because. But if you were to sit back and say, do this thing with the rest of the competition, if they're going to, I would at least try to do it. Do you? Especially if you're not. I don't think there's just going to be, this is going to be really, really difficult. You just have one question. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. An element of short form content. One question, cool, and then swipe, and then move on to the next. Off we're looking at maybe five to ten questions. I'm just wondering if anybody has done this to scale yet on YouTube Shorts. I probably have, if I'm honest. I, I would imagine there's already quiz style um, shorts knocking around. But I just noticed they have. Some Thank you. 
If you're watching a long form video, if it's one question, then yeah, it's great for like a short, just to give people a, a quick, like mental exercise in the middle of their brain dead scrolling session while they're looking at <laughs> chats and, and trick shots and whatever. I, and as we scroll down here, they've been pretty much out of this format. things that I need to do before picking out this number. It is 224. So we're going to rotate between gaming and non-gaming. Gaming did seem like a let's play kind of video, right? It, I What I expected with the title and from the way it was is it, about how this for a while they were going to try it so what? So I can going to do all these other so should I do it? We're going to test it out. I don't know if you can post it. I don't know if you can post it. I don't know if you can post it. Now, there is a lot of people who are here. I'm going to take an entire channel if you want to see it. 
play Grand Theft Auto and God of War and stuff, but like what now there has to be a different through line. What's unique about the content that is going to make the same person potentially come back to watch video after video. And that's kind of missing here too. We, I saw Mario and I'm seeing Grand Theft Auto and that's two separate corners of gaming in my opinion. Like think of the audience for Mario. Think of the audience for Grand Theft Auto. We have an M rated game and an E for everyone game. And like that, I know that sounds silly, but that stuff matters, right? Like it's, it really could slow you down on your path to growth if you don't figure out, like, what is the thing that brings these two games in common? You're the glue that holds them together if you're going to do that. So now it has to be a really interesting concept that people have come to know and expect from you. And what I'm saying is pretty high-level stuff. Like, this is going to take a while for you to learn and figure out. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of giving you a lot right now. But the biggest thing is when you... You know, when you start to narrow down your focus a little bit, it's going to make it easier to make videos. And then... Let me ask you on this channel, then, Dan. Given what they've done on the channel over the last two or three months, and then we have what I would say is a little bit of an outlier. This video has not done too bad. 300 views <coughs> in the last three days. Oh, three this days. Is a, bad, the, yeah. the previous few, which haven't done well. They've got this one on God of War, which is due to premiere in four days' time. Do you think that should be the next video that appears on this channel? If that's going to be the next video, I would look at it. Now that it hasn't, it, it's sitting there. We know it's coming. It's been made. Look at it and ask yourself, based on the, the conversation we just had, when I click on this video, if I'm a new person who doesn't know this channel at all, like, am I getting what I expected? Does Kratos get a new pet? I don't really know what that means. Yeah. I played God of War, and you don't know what it means, right? I was, I was thinking, do I really care if Kratos gets a new pet? I'm more interested in if... Uh, the creator pictures it like Kratos' new pet is open like or like just kill a big I feel as if that's a good sign change the title for that if you want that you have to make sure the content lines up with whatever title change you're going to make so if you're like oh Rob has a good idea there look at the intro you might go back and redo that video. And then I will say this, the premiere for like four days away for, for a video that seems pretty normal for your channel, uh, seems yeah. like a waste of a premiere. I'd only save those for like big, big, big releases. Indeed. Just change it up if you agree with our advice and then post it. Oh, well, I think that's it. Is being communicated really, really well. We don't have to click on the content to know what the content is about. Yeah. And like we've seen with some channels today, that's not the case. But this channel, I think, is nailing that. How I fixed this BMW E39 with fire. There's the car. It's on fire. It happened again. They're looking panicked. I there's We can talk about room for improvement. But, like, I think the way... You know, they're using three yellow taxis. And they're making it clear what the video is about. So, 
It's a curious juxtaposition whereby these thumbnails are simple, but sometimes that makes these types of thumbnails really hard to actually make. But I would say that the creator has kind of nailed down quite a, a good template. You know, a, a text that's big, fat, chunky, contrasts well with a background, very easy to read. It's one or two um, words, and their focus is on this, this BMW or BMWs of this type that they keep what looks to be abusing or making worse or making better. Uh, and they create a... They say bravo, like continue to make packages. I think some of the topics are more juicy than other right. videos. So there's a video of 15,000 views. How I saved my BMW E39 from rust with this DIY repair. And there's another one. How I saved my BMW E39 from the junkyard. Those both did very well from the, for the channel. And they speak to a story being told of like a before and after situation where you have this car that's a wreck and you're going to fix it. And we can see from the little moving images there that that's exactly what they're doing. So those videos are really, really interesting on the surface. Whereas step-by-step -step oil change, it's more of a search-driven video. What it took to get this BMW E39 driving again, not as many views. You know, and it, you're pointing at something that's just terrifying, but it's so small, it's hard to see. So like, be thinking about Make sure that you see that. It's research you see of other people who've done other things in the past and that's I would be thinking about these videos from the very beginning of each one and think about the concept because obviously some of these work better than others and I think it's because the concept is really strong in some of these videos. I think there is an opportunity here to expand the total addressable market a little bit, Dan. Um, you know, maybe kind of a bit of a Just thinking like what the yeah. Is there a way to almost subvert that in the, in the pitch somehow? I can't think of anything immediately, but yeah. as I say, Dan, this one, step-by-step -step oil filter change on the car, that's just like a how-to, which is very niche. You know, that doesn't appeal to only like a, a small number of hardcore fans, but some, some do, as you said. So it's just finding a, a broader audience with a packaging. Uh, yeah. with these videos and there was one more thing I was going to say but it's just escaped me what it was and I can't think what it was oh that's so frustrating I'll say this when <laughs> I see the rust video I don't even look at the name of the car I don't care about the name of the car I yeah. recognize that yeah, it looks yeah. like an old car so. and I just I, I know what it looks like to have an old car with rust so I'm interested in the story of fixing it so I feel like they're relying on BMW E39 as like an SEO search term mm. but they don't have to do that you know not every single title needs BMW E39 do I have to be a fan of that car to click on your video and enjoy it? The answer is probably no. So you you don't have to keep trying. I see the double title thing with the bar in the middle. I see they're trying to do search and discovery. Like, just focus on yeah. Broward for most of these, unless it is like an oil change video. Like, we don't need two titles. It, it's that, isn't it? They're, they're including the, the part number. It, that, it, is like, that is a keyword that they're desperate right. to include. Yes, and then the BMW E39 comes up twice yes. now. So you're, you're wasting valuable title real estate on something that's going to show up in the end of the title anyway. You know? I remember what I was going to say, Dan. Yeah. When we were mousing over, I can even see just from these little clips that there's authenticity there, like running through the camera, but there's also a lot of editing going into these as well. Um, yeah. 
which is fantastic, really. This probably proves why they're going for quality over quantity, and they may only be able to make one video a month or two a month. And I think in this circumstance, we would say continue that trend because it's setting, setting the content apart from others in your space. Absolutely. I, I feel like the content itself is probably just spot on. It, it has that, that vibe to it, just by looking at those little moving images. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I've said everything I want to say. I, I don't know if you have to get rid of the title. It's more which is fine. Maybe we might get a speed round here. Let's get it going, please. five videos in a week and then have nothing mm -hmm. for the next month you know batch yeah. of content but then stagger the release of the, the content so you're giving a consistent um output mm -hmm. to your audience <coughs> gaming hog discoveries how would you create a gaming walkthrough of a random video game with no commentary and no face i try to make good thumbnails but i only get four views uh well <laughs> you are ticking a lot of the humanness out of gaming content. You're competing in a very competitive space because it's very, 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 very easy to make that content. Because all you need is the game. There are creators who do that before the game is out. So you can keep it back. So, Here's how I would do it, Dan, because I've realized I do this myself sometimes. When I'm wanting to find a specific item or complete a very specific thing in a game, I'll search for it on YouTube and I'll look for the shortest video. And it doesn't need any commentary or anything. It just shows me immediately what the answer I'm looking for. Right. So I would say if you're going to do no commentary, no face, just show the, the player as quickly as possible the solution. And that's it. You make like a hundred videos of them. Like when I've been trying to find specific fun things in games, like an item or like I've missed something in a level, I want a 40 second video on the solution. Right. And I found myself looking on YouTube a lot for that type of stuff. That's true. I mean, and now you're going to be filling a gap. It's harder to make that content, but not by much. Mm -hmm. And you're filling a gap in the market. Oh, man, Gib. Huge shout out to Coach Antonio. I wish hey. I would have invested in the service a lot earlier in my YouTube journey. Let me just screenshot that for Antonio and I'll send it to him. And who knows, maybe he'll, he'll say thank you with a video message to you. So, of course, Oman Gibb is one person who has taken advantage of the Coach <laughs> In program we have here at VideoCube, there is a link in the description, by the way. I forgot to mention that earlier. There's a link in the description that will take you to the coaching page. And I do think we have spaces available at the moment. But of course, they are always linked to the page. 
it's not suddenly going to give you an extra 10x impressions because you've changed something. It will still continue to test that audience that it's testing with. And if that audience reacts more positively to the changes, then yes, then it may start to push out to a broader audience. But it, it's not like a hard reset when you make changes. It's just offering the existing test audience something new and fresh. Okay, uh, Dan, Danjko, haven't changed banner and profile pick in two years. Does this impact channel growth at all? I would say no. Um, it's a nice to have, isn't it? If you've got time yeah. and you want to refresh things, because a lot of people do visit your channel page right. over over years. But if if like you have more pressing things like new videos and content to make and improving titles and thumbnails, I would always direct your energies to there if you can yeah yarning for smile thank you yarning for a smile uh, thank you for the review i upload all year long but spent all of 2023 building a studio oh speaking of in the background yeah i'm going to sort that out uh for my craft and working on the second part of this slipper video uh sorry dan answer that i need to turn off the light <laughs> Uh, okay, so you spent you've been building your studio. Congrats! Hopefully, it's uh, in a better, more stable condition than Rob's. Um, so you're working on the second part of the slipper video. That's great. I, I do hope our feedback was helpful to you. I hope your studio doesn't explode. And uh, <laughs> it's yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> Focus on the title, especially if it's for YouTube Shorts. And I'll just leave it there. I'll keep it as simple as that. Hard. Uh, Walter oh. Max simply says, YouTube. I don't know, maybe if you pressed enter by accident when you were typing out a question, uh, but there we are. Diced Pineapple. Hi, guys. I joined one-on-one -on -one coaching at the beginning of the year. Looking forward to seeing my progress after 12 months. Shout out to my coach, Tina. So that's another nice. person with a New Year's resolution to get a YouTube coach. And now they have one. Oh, my goodness. The Super Chats keep coming in, Dan. How do we solve this problem uh, every single week? Let me just try and knock off the ones that we've already read out. So I brought that number down to 16. Uh, Silver's Space I recently started to take my channel seriously within the past few videos do I unless my previous videos oh, okay there's always a bit of a dilemma there isn't there mm. what to do with old content I would say if it's not a good representation of your new content you could unlist them because uh, they could be bringing in audience that are like oh cool I like this person's videos and then they look at your new stuff and it's nothing to do with the old stuff so <laughs> Should I leave gambling and alcohol ads off in AdSense or will I make more? I never touch those settings. I don't know any YouTubers who do. Because yeah. I, I think they, they're going to choose anyway. They're going to choose yeah. what kind of content they want to advertise on. So I don't think you have to worry about it. I mean, it's great that you're thinking about your audience and how to ethically uh, advertise with them. Uh, Maybe if you do start, start to see these gambling and alcohol ads on your content and you don't like that, it, it makes you feel icky, then maybe that's the point at which you oh, would hard. make that change. But I would say oh God, when you're first getting into monetization, let's just let YouTube take care of everything and see what happens. But congratulations on hitting monetization. The nocturnal nook. 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 You have become a member and you get this sound effect. Why? Why did you become a member? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, quick facts, animals. 
Do you need to fill out the form before every stream to have a channel reviewed? Or is yeah. it filling out once? All right. So we purge the form every single week. Otherwise, the form would have about 144,000. <laughs> Design burst. I was getting a little worried there that they weren't going to carry on the streak, uh, but Design Burst are here. What do you mean by shadow ban? Have you experienced that? Do we need to be concerned about it? And if so, what should we do? Oh, that terrifying word, shadow ban. What is it? Uh, how do we explain people, this? Yeah, when I see people saying, oh, my video was shadow banned, red flags go off my head because I feel like there's been some misinformation around shadow banning. It's called shadow banning for a reason, first of all. It's because you don't know that your video has anything, any marks against it. The idea of shadow banning is that your video stops suddenly getting views, right? And so when that happens, and it can happen for a lot of reasons, people automatically assume YouTube shadow banned my video. But in most cases that I've seen, YouTube gives you a signal <laughs> as to why that video is being right. suppressed in some way. You yeah. don't get, like, yeah, you don't get you know, lost and you don't right. understand why. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. But it's just like boogeyman, and I think people use it as a way to blame something. Other than your video, YouTube was giving it a lot of impressions, and now it's not. That doesn't mean it's shadow banned. It just means that it's just not getting the impressions it used to. It tapered off over time. And there's some of things of like. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go for it. Or mature themed content, and then YouTube restricts that content to a adult audience. That you might think that's shadow banning, but that's YouTube protecting their platform to make sure that the, the content is not being used by the A human isn't involved in making the uh, content whatsoever. Pardon. And if YouTube can identify that, yeah, it may, you know, shadow ban it in, in that sense. But we're never going to have the details on that. YouTube, I don't think, will ever reveal uh, the hard facts on when it decides to make these decisions. And as I, as I say again, YouTube is doing it to protect the stakeholders, those being advertisers, viewers, and the creator community at large. The Nocturnal Nuke is back with another question. My channel is fantasy, ambient music, and short stories. I had 3,500 subs, but my vids flatlined at a couple of hundred. Is this normal for my subs count? I think the sub count is irrelevant mm -hmm. in this sense. Um, is this long form or shorts? I know you say short stories, but I don't know ambient if I mean music. shorts themselves. Ambient music is usually long form, because it's supposed yeah. to be like a put it on and chill kind of thing. Mm. Um, I would say it's just a competitive space, you know? It's, it's difficult to rank in that category of YouTube, and it's difficult to edit. That's the thing, like, we see so many people experimenting in this space, and we, we, we rarely see, like, a successful example for us to kind of use as a benchmark. Uh, but I hope that kind of answers the question. Super sticky, 
Super Chat. Uh, we've got one also from Dot J. My channel is all about Minecraft. We've audited many of them in the past. How do I make thumbnails more clickable? I put so much effort. I put so much into the edits. We should little views. Mm. It's it is a matter of communicating a clear message and coming up with a good concept, a really good concept in Minecraft's case because it's so competitive. Uh, people need to look at your video and understand exactly what it's about and want to watch at the same time. Ooh, someone put themselves through a lot there. Let me <laughs> check it out. Like I've always said, you can have the best <laughs> editing in the world, but no one's going to know that if they don't have a reason to click on your video in the first place. We have audited, I would say, at least 250 Minecraft channels. And there are Victoria still updates this on a regular basis. Sasquatch God is here with another question, Dan. I have a channel based on my web novel where I upload chapters, episodes multiple times a week. How can I grow? This is a tricky one because yeah. this is YouTube. Total addressable market. How do you make the content more accessible to a broader audience? And maybe you need to have some videos about like. Okay, here you go. Cut off the last bit. <laughs> and the next super chat comes from this person. I am not going to read out their channel name, but they do have. I look forward to trying the <coughs> boost from the thumbnail contest. Uh, is that from the Facebook uh, competition? I, I'm a little lost on that one. Sorry if something's missing in translation there. Maria Carlyle, will non-English videos harm my mostly English channel? I think this just requires one sound effect, right? Yes. Why would you have a channel in one language and then try and get your audience to understand a, another language, unless it is a language education channel. I think it needs a separate channel. We have a Spanish vidIQ channel, for example, for our Spanish-speaking audience. So it doesn't make sense to me on the surface, unless there's more to the channel that I'm not fully understanding. Uh, mm. Kamudge in AK, you guys are great. You just reached the mm. super stage. Carhub, thank you so much for the channel audit. I really want to take my channel to the next level, so would it be better if I replace the keyword B S W I would check traffic sources. Let's just make sure that you're not getting all of your traffic from the search term BMW E39. Yeah. Good point. It's, it's, it's likely not going to be, but you know, I just want, just want to add that caveat. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think thumbnails look rather than an algorithm. Uh, but like I said earlier, think about the concept of the video. It might The BMW part, E39 part, might not be the most clickable thing. It could be you doing something really cool with the car. 
I love Envato Elements because it is a one-stop shop for me as a content creator so I can create videos in a shorter amount of time. Go try out Envato Elements and get unlimited downloads of over 11 million professional assets, all covered by a lifetime commercial. The humble god. I'm a monthly subscriber on VidIQ. Uh, presume you mean VidIQ Pro or Boost? Uh, thank you for being part of this. It could, um, only because you've been building an audience that expects that educational edge. And if you turn around and start reacting to other people's content. <laughs> This is that famous line. I'm thinking like if you take your educational stuff into sci-fi lore. So it's still educational okay. content, but you're using examples from other I'm channels. Done, no that guys. could be another way of doing okay. this. There you go. Crazy 77 Hi, I just wanted to That's say all. thanks Thank for you. all your educational videos. I'm trying to stick to the advice, and the numbers are slowly rising. Huge thanks. That's what we like to hear. Uh, just remember, we are merely guides and your humble servants. You putting in the work is what's causing your channel to grow. Purple Nine Rose. Mine is a music channel doing covers. How do I grow my channel? Broad question. Uh, I think typically with a channel like yours, like try and stick to a okay. particular music genre and be quite strong in the uh, sure. titling and pitch of the videos. I think music genres is still one place where SEO can make a difference. You know, whether it's um, jazz, garage, punk, whatever, and try and stick to those genres because you're sticking to an audience that likes that type of music. Um, but, you know, without artists in the channel, it's kind of a, a little difficult to, to answer that one.